What's up guys, it's Eric from Rare Candy and welcome back to another entry into our Rogue Rumble series where we take a look at some overlooked or underutilized cards and we try to make some cool rogue deck ideas out of them. And so for this entry we are looking at a new card from Dragon Majesty and that is going to be Quagsire. And Quagsire, honestly not a card I think is like super overlooked necessarily. I think there has been some talk of pairing it with uh, things like Kingdra GX or, you know, even other water attackers uh, like Empoleon just as a couple of examples. But I don't think many people have really looked at Quagsire or talked about Quagsire as an attacker of its own. So I felt like that would make a cool little rogue deck idea. Uh, and that's what we are going to be trying out today. So let's take a look at Quagsire. So this is a new card, of course, from Dragon Majesty, and the reason this card has seen some attention is for this ability wash out. As often as you like during your turn, you may move a water energy from one of your bench Pokemon to your active Pokemon. So this is the main reason people have been talking about Quagsire as a potential uh, support Pokemon in a lot of these GX heavy decks or other heavy hitting water Pokemon decks. Uh, but it, Quagsire actually does have a half decent attack, which I think a lot of people have skipped over. It has Hydro Pump for three colorless energy, the 60 plus 20 more for every water attached to this Pokemon. So the base damage you're hitting for is going to be 120 if you have three water energy. And combined with things like Choice Band and things like Shrine of Punishment, which we have in this deck, Quagsire actually can be a formidable attacker of its own. So that's what we are making happen here. Uh, very similar to some of the other uh, Shrine of Punishment decks we've seen running around. A very similar engine. Uh, we have, of course, our main attacker here, but we also have a uh, Mag Cargo line and a Ranguru as well to help get us set up a little bit better. Of course, Mag Cargo is going to be for that smooth over ability once during your turn before you attack. You may search your deck for a card, shuffle your deck, and put that card on top. So after we do that, we can use something like a Ranguru to use that Instruct ability to draw into that card, or we can play something like an Acrobike as well to draw into it. So we have a couple different ways to dig through our deck a little bit, but we are running some additional support Pokemon here. The first which is going to be Pseudo Widow for that roadblock ability. So your opponent can't have more than four bench Pokemon, and if they have more already, they have to discard till they have four. So the reason we're playing this is, of course, to play around Zoroark GX. So Quagsire only has 120 HP, which means things like a Rhydus beating will just knock it out in one hit. But if we have this Sudowoodo in play, actually a Zoroark can't knock us out. They would need the help of something like a Professor Kukui in order to get over that 120 HP hump that, uh, uh, or 100 HP hump that Soda Widow is going to put in their way. So it's going to help us a little bit more against uh, Zoroark variants in particular. It's also good against a couple of other decks, but uh, Zoroark is the main reason we are playing this card. And the last Pokemon in the list is going to be one copy of Volcanian Prism Star. So Volcanian Prism Star, kind of just an alternate attacker that we have access to. It's a little bit tankier than Quagsire and has a different weakness. Uh, so instead of being weak to grass, we are weak to lightning, which means something like a Golispod GX is going to struggle a little bit more to knock you out. Similarly, something like a Tapu Bulu GX will have to actually discard all of their energy with Nature's Judgment in order to knock this thing out. But there's also just a couple of other cool things going on for the card. The first, of course, is Jet Geyser. Once during your turn before you attack, you may discard a Water Energy from your hand. And if you do, your opponent switches their active with one of their bench Pokemon. So this is kind of a just another gusting effect that we have in the deck and also puts water energy in the discard pile for us to aqua patch out at some point. But Volcanian also has a solid attack as well. Sauna Blast for three water does 100 and does 20 to each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So sometimes we can set up some additional knockouts with that 20 spread as well. Just a, a nice little alternate attacker that has some utility against certain decks out there. So going on to the rest of the deck, we have uh, looking at our supporter line, four copies of Cynthia, of course, the best draw supporter that we probably have access to right now. Uh, shuffle your hand in your deck, draw six. Also playing three copies of Lily, draw until we have six cards in hand, but if it's our first turn, we can draw until we have eight. So Lily, pretty nice, especially in conjunction with Mag Cargo. Uh, something like a Cynthia really wouldn't combo well with our Mag Cargo, but Lily can just draw right into the cards that we want to smooth over. And since we don't play anything like Tapu Lele GX in this list, since this is a Shrine of Punishment based deck, uh, playing extra copies of Lily will help us maybe have access to it on the first turn sometimes. 
And the other, only other draw support we have is two copies of Professor Kukui. So we draw two cards, and during our turn, we're going to do 20 more damage to our opponent's active Pokemon. So Kukui, very, very important against a couple of different Pokemon out there, most notably Baby Buzzwell. So Quagsire for, you know, three energy hits for 120. If we want to get over 120, we need an additional energy. Sometimes it, that's a little too much to ask for, or even still, you might want to conserve some of your energy if you're expecting your Quagsire to get knocked out in the next turn. So in order to hit for things that have 130 HP, we're going to need something like a Kukui to get over that hump. Uh, it's just going to allow us to make our numbers work a little bit better. Uh, and not only for Baby Buzzle, but other things too, like uh, you know, just even taking knockouts on basic GXs sometimes. Between Choice Band, Shrine to Punishment, Professor Kukui, you can actually really start to ramp up your damage. So let's just run through the math really quick. If you have just the base, uh, you know, three damage counters on Quagsire, you're doing 120. 150 once you factor in Choice Band, 170 with Kukui, and then 180 once you factor in the Shrine of Punishment damage. So just all these different damage modifiers give us a variety of ways to actually take one-hit knockouts against a lot of different things that are out there in the format. Also, Kukui, very nice. Again, with Meg Cargo, not only can we get over the 130 HP hump or you know hit those numbers that we want, but also we can draw into cards that we use Smooth Over with. So just another way to draw the card that we are going to put on top of our deck. And then just three copies of Guzma to round out our support cards, of course, to choose what we want to take knockouts on. Uh, that isn't our only form of draw. I did mention earlier we do have four copies of Acrobike. Great card in this deck. Uh, not only can we dig through our deck a little bit quicker, we can put water energies in the discard pile to get out with Aqua Patch, and also draw into what we want to smooth over with Megcargo as well. So just a nice little form of item-based draw. Look at the top two cards of your deck. Put one into your hand and discard the other. Let's see, we of course have four copies of Shrine of Punishment. I did mention that already. So it's that new stadium card that has been seeing a ton of play dominating the competitive scene. Uh, you put one damage counter in, in between turns on GXs and EXs, both yours and your opponent. So this is going to allow us an additional way to modify our damage against, of course, GX heavy decks. Uh, we have four copies of Ultra Ball, three copies of Nest Ball, pretty standard split for most decks right now in the current format. One copy of Rescue Stretcher just as a form of recovery to get some Pokemon that have been knocked out back into our hand or deck. We have four copies of Aqua Patch, of course, so we get to attach a Water Energy from our discard pile to one of our benched Water Pokemon. So, of course, we can accelerate a bunch of Water Energy onto the bench, and even if our attacker is in the active spot, well, no big deal. We can use Quagsire's ability to move that energy onto the active Pokemon. And so Qua Aqua Patch in conjunction with Quagsire is just really cool because there's a lot of times where if your active Quagsire gets damaged, you can Guzma up something and then, you know, Aqua Patch a bunch and move all that damage, or I'm sorry, all that energy to a fresh Quagsire. Just a really, really cool combo that Aqua Patch and Quagsire enables. And then I believe, yeah, we also have one copy of Switch just to... Uh, you know, maybe if we get something stuck in the active spot, we can switch without having to play a Guzma. And with Mag Cargo, we can sometimes draw into it right away if we need it. So uh, not a card we're going to use too much, but we do have some awkward Pokemon we could potentially start with. So I did want at least one copy of a switching card in here outside of Guzma. And then four copies of Choice Band to round out our trainer card. So, of course, we can do more damage to GXs and EXs. You guys are probably plenty familiar with Choice Band. And then going on to the energy, of course, eight copies of Water Energy, but two copies of Counter Energy as well. So by default, it provides a colorless energy, but if you have more prize cards remaining than your opponent, and if this card is attached to a non-GX or EX, this card provides every type of energy, but only two at the same time. So that means if we are behind on prizes, this is basically a double rainbow energy, so we can slap that down on a Quagsire to instantly uh, provide two of any energy at the same time. Also can sometimes actually be useful with some of the other Pokemon in this deck, like Suda Widow, just as an example. Uh, we can potentially hit things like Zoroark for weakness. Uh, it's not something you're going to run into too often, but you will have the option to with counter energy as well. So it's just another way for us to get uh, some more energy into play more quickly. 
So yeah, guys, that is going to be the list we are going to be trying out for Quagsire. Like I said, a lot of people I think have been really looking at Quagsire as a support Pokemon, but honestly, I think there's enough support in the current format for Quagsire to kind of do his own thing here. And this deck has actually been surprisingly decent. I built this kind of just for fun, uh, just to meme some people on PTCGO, but the deck is actually pretty cool. So let's head over to the battle portion of the video, and we'll show you how this deck looks in action. Alrighty guys, we have ourselves a game here we're just going to call the Coin Flip, which we do win, which is definitely nice in an Evolution deck. You always want to get that extra turn to, uh, you know, get your get your basics down and play. That way they can start evolving on your next turn. So, And here we actually have a pretty solid first hand. Assuming our Rancru is not prized, uh, we're actually going to be in a solid spot, I think. So let's see. Oh, but our opponent has a Trubbish. Okay, that... <laughs> That makes this hand, it's it's still good, but it's definitely not as strong because now we're going to have to play right into Trash Avalanche. So, so yeah, we can definitely, yeah, there's no getting around. I really don't think there's a way to play around um, uh, putting items in the discard. So we might just have to go all in and assume that's what's gonna happen. So here, I guess we grab the Slugma. That seems pretty good here. We definitely wanna get Meg Cargo up and running as well. And here we have kind of an interesting situation because we can we can just play the other nest ball and grab ourselves probably Volcanium Prism Star or you know whatever we decide to do here. Uh, so we can do that and then we can switch into maybe another Wooper and then Orangaroo for one, or we could just and, and you know try to save the Ultra Ball next turn to play our hand down. But I think what I would like to do is just play the Ultra Ball now. And guarantee the extra card off the instruct. So with Ultra Ball, we can get ourselves down um, a you know, Volcanium Prism Star. We could even grab Mag Cargo and just uh, in preparation of next turn to guarantee ourselves a supporter. But we're just going to go for the instruct this turn. And nice. So we do get Cynthia and a Water Energy. So yeah, I really wanted to get the energy down as well. Uh, so if we can attach it to Volcanium Prism Star, that seems pretty good because we can always use that washout ability to move it to the active whenever we're ready for it and here okay nothing else too much really this turn but next turn we might have a solid hand so we are going to see a nest ball from our opponents this is probably going to be the buzzle garboder deck if i had to guess and yes this is going to be the buzzle garboder shrine of punishment deck uh, so kind of a battle of the shrine decks in in this matchup here and i'm not really sure how this is going to go uh, we do have the Kukui to deal with the 130 HP Buzzwolves, um, but at the same time, uh, Garbatox, or not Garbatox, I'm sorry, uh, Trash Lanch is going to be doing a lot to us. So well, we'll have to see which of these one prize attacker decks is going to come out on top. I think it should be pretty even for the most part, maybe even a little bit favored for this Garbiter deck since it requires far less resources to get a Garboder up and running, uh, whereas it's going to take three energies on a Quagsire to make that happen for us. So we'll have to see what is going to happen here. So Prince actually discarding a Met Cargo, going for Slugma. They must have another one in hand or a Rescue Stretcher. And we're going to see a Shrine of Punishment come down and just a pass. Okay, so I, I'm fine with that. And what I kind of want to do here is use Jet Geyser. So I want to do that. Uh, not because I don't want to attack into Trubbish, but just because I want to get this water energy in the discard pile. That way we can aqua patch it back onto our field. And from there, I'm just trying to think, what do we actually want to get or do after that? We have the Cynthia. That's going to be, I think, our best raw option. But at the same time, we have Professor Kukui. It's, I think, really tempting to use the Kukui here. If we hit, we've only used one Ultra Ball, so we have like five outs essentially. Or no, we have seven outs to a Quagsire. We have three Ultra Balls left and four Quagsire. So we, if we Kuku, we, we could actually hit the Quagsire. It's a little bit riskier, but I think even if we whiff, we're still in an okay spot because at. Yeah, because they'd only be doing 50 to us if they get out Diancy Prism Star. So I think we're honestly... I think it's safe. It's risky, but I think it's safe to go for it. And we do hit the Quagsire. That's pretty big. So what we can do here is we can evolve into Quagsire. We can attach this water energy we have in hand. Then we can use Washout and move that energy uh, that we just got into play up to this Quagsire to take a knockout. 
So Hydro Pump will do 120 base damage, but we have to remember that Professor Kukui did give us an extra 20, which is going to allow us to hit 140, knocking out this Buzzwell. So our opponent probably thought they were promoting something kind of safe, but uh, Quagsire kind of came out of nowhere there with a knockout. So let's see how our opponent's going to respond. That was definitely a pretty good turn for us. Uh, I think if both decks just trade knockouts every turn, we are going to come out ahead. So we'll have to see how our opponent is going to be able to respond here. So we did see them promote the Buzzle here, and I have to say I'm fine with that. Even if they, they find a Beast Energy and Diancy Prism Star, they're only going to be hitting for 80. And even if they find a Professor Kukui, that's only going to be 100 damage. So I think we're pretty safe here. Here we're going to see a Rainbow Energy come down. We're going to see a Kukui. Really happy they attached the Rainbow Energy because actually that means we don't even need any additional energy or a Kukui. We can just take a knockout here. So here we're going to Acrobike. And yeah, we definitely grab the Guzma. And trying to think, do we actually play the Guzma? Because I'm just thinking, because if we Guzma something, we're going to put this Buzzwell on Sledgehammer turns. And they would be able to take a knockout. So I think it's probably better just to... Like, as tempting as it is to Guzma something, I think I'd rather just do this. Or, hmm. We could even take a knockout on Meg Cargo with the Volcanium Prism Star. But, hmm. I think either one's probably fine. So here we're just going to go for the Quagsire. Actually, maybe going for Meg Cargo would be better. Actually, yeah, we probably actually misplayed there. Uh, we got rid of the Lily instead. I think we probably should have gotten rid of Cynthia and then kept the Lily. That way we could draw into something with our Mech Cargo. But nevertheless, I mean, we don't really need that much this turn anyways. And actually, we could go for a Jet Geyser potentially, but I think this is fine too. I kind of want to knock out this, uh, this Buzzle. It's really the only threat that we're seeing right now. So here we will smooth over. We'll just put that other Quagsire on the top of our deck in preparation for next turn. So we can get down this energy and then we can just hide your pump for the knockout here. And so actually, even if we... Okay, we do hit an Auk Patch, but I was going to say, even if we whiff uh, the water energy for next turn, uh, we do have this Professor Kukui. So if they were to trash one HS, we could just wash out... Uh, you know, twice attach a counter energy, do 100 damage, plus the Kukui would be a knockout. So um, I think we're going to be in a good spot here. But our opponent is going to go for a Nest Ball. I'd imagine we'll probably see a Buzzwell. Or, okay, we are going to see an Oranguru. So I guess they might not have a way to draw what they need. So they are going to use this Smooth Over ability and then use their Oranguru to draw into uh, whatever that card may be. So we're going to see an Instruct. Let's see what they are going to get off of this. Maybe just a Supporter. Okay, so we are going to see probably a Guzma. Yep, yeah, since they were attaching to the Buzzle, they are going to target down our Meg Cargo, kind of seeing how important the card is. You know, they play it in their deck as well. They know how valuable Meg Cargo can be. So, but at the same time, I'm kind of okay with that just because we have Professor Kukui to retaliate here. And uh, yeah, I like the spot that we're going to be in. We can get down another Quagsire. And. We could attach counter energy, but let's Kukui first. Hopefully we can hit a water energy instead. Okay, no water energy, but um, I still like this hand. We can Ultra Ball. Uh, definitely get rid of the Shrine. That's going to be a worthless card in this matchup. And we're beyond the point of worrying about Trash Wanch. We're getting knocked out. We're kind of accepting that at this point. So we're going to grab a Wooper, I think, because we can actually play our hand down to draw an extra card with a Ranguru this turn. I think that would be good. Uh, where do we get down the counter energy? I think it's fine just going on the Wooper, maybe. I'm not sure really if it matters just because I don't foresee this counter energy being activated for this game since we are just so far ahead. Uh, here we will get an Acrobike and we'll grab ourselves a Cynthia as well for the next turn. But here we can just Hydro Pump doing 140 since we did play that Kukui, making us go down to three prizes. So our opponent's Buzzwells aren't going to be too great for the rest of the game since we are off Sledgehammer turns and uh, we'll have to see how they're going to respond this turn. They only have two cards in hand, so they will be able to go for the Smooth Over Mag Cargo combo if they want to. 
or smooth over Oranguru combat, my mistake guys. So let's see what they're going to get here. I don't remember if they played a draw supporter. No, they did not play a draw supporter last turn, so. And they took a prize, plus the card in hand that they drew for turn, so. Yeah, I think it's almost as sure that we're going to see a draw supporter from them here. Uh, maybe just a Cynthia, or even... Okay, we are going to see an Acrobike. I'm not sure if that's what they got with the smooth over, but let's see. Okay, just going to go for a Cynthia. Like I said, kind of expected to see a draw supporter. They're definitely going to be searching for a Garbodor and a Rainbow Energy. Okay, but we are going to see Fighting come down Buzzle. So maybe, yeah, they do have the switch. And actually, they will be able to... Yeah, take the knockout. They only need to do 50 so that Energy and the Diancie is going to put them over the top needed to do that. So let's see. What are we going to do here this turn? Um, I think we just promote... Yeah, I think we just promote the Quagsire. I really don't want to promote this Volcanian Prism Star. So I think, yeah, I think what we do this turn is we, it's possible for us to knock out this Buzzwool, but it's going to require so much energy. I feel like we can actually kind of open ourselves up to an interesting play here. Let's see, they've only gone through one of their rainbow energies. So yeah, they're probably going to be able to get Garbutter up and running next turn, I would imagine. So here we're going to get down an Aqua Patch. Another Aqua Patch, and it doesn't really matter too much where we put. We're just going to use Wash Out to move it up to the active anyways. But we really need to hit another Water Energy this turn in case our opponent can knock out our Quagsire on their next turn. And nice, so we actually do get that. It's going to be pretty big. So that's nice there. And we have Stretcher. We also have one Aqua Patch left in deck. I think I think I want to Acrobite before we play the Stretcher just in case we can hit our Aqua Patch before uh, putting back some Pokemon into our deck. So let's go for the Acrobike here. And nice. That's actually one of the best Acrobikes we could have gotten. We can discard that Shrine. Pretty worth this card in this matchup. So here we will go for the Aqua Patch. Just getting some more energy in play here. And we can Stretcher. So we'll get our, let's get a Quagsire and then our Mag Cargo line back into our deck. That seems okay. And then from there, we can just instruct. So let's see what we can get off this one card. We get a choice band. Okay. Uh, that is at least a card we can thin out of our deck. And here we can use Washout. So let's get an energy off of this Volcanium Prism Star. And then we can just go for a Hydro Pump. And even though this won't knock out the Buzzle, I, it, I don't think it's going to be a big deal because... Basically, if we knock out this Buzzle, commit the extra energy, and they have a Garbutter next turn and knock us out, we're only going to have a single Water Energy in play, not counting that Counter Energy. And that's actually not going to do us much good. We've used all of our Aqua Patches, and so I literally just don't think we can afford to knock out the Buzzle. We aren't going to be able to set up a response on the next turn if we do. So here, we can just do 120, and the reason I'm not really worried about this is because our opponent, or on our next turn, we can actually Guzma up something and then take a knockout on maybe their mag cargo or something with volcanium prism star and the spread damage will actually knock out this buzzwell for us so i think that's going to be kind of our course of action here so let's see what they're able to make happen we are going to see a kukui okay that is not a guzma i am fine with that and so let's see how our opponent is going to respond not really sure what they are looking for this turn okay so we're just going to see a sledgehammer our that definitely uh, worked out for us here. So, yeah, we definitely Guzma this turn. Honestly, something we could even do is just take a knockout on this Trash Lanch uh, Garbodor with a different Quagsire. But I kind of like the idea of guzma up something else. So maybe either this Trubbish or... Actually, probably the Med Cargo is better here, but... Yeah, because we're going to go down to one prize. So maybe we should have Guzmaed up the Mag Cargo instead. That might have been a little bit better. But nevertheless, uh, it's not really going to change too much for us because we're going to go down to one prize and we're going to have to deal with this uh, other Trash Ranch car better no matter what. So I think it will work out here. So here we're going to use Wash Out and we can move some of this Water Energy up to Volcanium Prism Star. And then this uh, Sauna Blast will be able to take a double knockout for us. And one thing that's really important too is we left two water energies in play, meaning that even if our opponent does knock out this Volcanium Prism Star with their Garbodor, we have two energies in play and all we need is one more water energy to take a knockout or a return knockout on this Garbodor. 
and we did hit the water energy off the prize that's actually pretty big here so let's see how our opponent is going to respond uh, they're going to need a judge here otherwise i really just don't know what they can do and we have um you know we have this ability to wash out so even if our opponent tries to like guzma stall our ranguru we can actually just move the energy to a ranguru to use psychic if we need to it's interesting our opponent's going to get down a rainbow on this trubbish that's a little bit interesting so we're going to see a rescue stretcher as well let's see what they are going to get back here i'd imagine if they have a garbutter they just get back a garbutter okay so we are going to see a stretcher not really too worried about those going back into the deck here they are going to go for a uh, tate and liza so maybe they're trying to attack with a trash ranch that only has 10 damage on it because maybe they're thinking well you know this counter energy isn't going to do me any good basically so if i move all of the energy to this quagsire i can just take a knockout on the trash ranch with 20 damage on it but here we just get the victory screen so i guess they did not what they get uh, did not get what they needed to close out the game and Quaxar is going to take the a win on one of the, the best decks in the entire format. So uh, Quaxar, you know, definitely flexing its muscle there in that game. But let's try a different game here and see what we can make happen. So here we are going to start Wooper, get that Oranguru down. I'm going to hang on to the Suda Widow. I really don't know what we're playing against. And a lot of matchups, Suda Widow isn't the best card to have in play. Here it is going to be Vickable. Interesting. So... I'm really curious if this is going to be Tapu Bulu or if it's going to be Rayquaza. And here we actually get Slugma, so definitely want to get that guy down. Uh, if it's Tapu Bulu, we might be in some trouble just because they can actually, uh, you know, knock us out every turn without having to discard their energy. And they actually can use Tapu Wilderness GX to heal off all of the damage that we do to them. Basically making it so where we have to one-shot them or we are just going to get all that damage healed. So. If this is Bulu, we are going to be in some trouble, I think. But here we're going to see a Steven's Resolve, okay? They still don't have an attacker in play, so not, still not sure what we're going up against. But I have to assume that they are going to have an attacker for next turn after the Steven's Resolve. No doubt they're going to get part of the piece that they need to complete their Rare Candy Vicavolt combo, plus an attacker ready to go. So let's see, what do we do, what do we do? Um... I definitely want to Lily. I want to save this Kukui because if this is Bulu, like I said, I don't know if it is yet. I really want to make sure we have the damage modifiers needed to uh, take some one-hit knockouts on it. So here we'll get down a Water Energy. And yeah, we definitely attach somewhere. I think we attach to the Wooper because we can actually retreat to the Pseudo Widow and try to sacrifice it potentially. So we'll get down the Choice Band as well and then just Lily for four. And we hit an Acrobike, let's see. Nice, we do get Wooper. We do have to discard the Quagsire, which is kind of unfortunate, but we do have Rescue Stretcher, of course, to fish it back out of the discard pile, maybe at some point. And we do have Ultra Ball as well, but I kind of actually want to save that, maybe to get ourselves our Mag Cargo uh, for next turn. So, or even a different Quagsire, or just play our hand down to Orangaroo. So I'm just going to retreat and kind of sacrifice the Pseudo Widow. Like I said, our opponent has a huge hand, and they just search their deck for any three cards. So I think it's very likely our active Pokemon will be knocked out. So we'll just retreat there. And this is going to be Tapu Bulu. So that is not what I like to see at all. Uh, we are going to see Aether Paradise hit the field. So it's that Stadium card. Reduces damage to basic grass and lightning Pokemon by 30. Definitely very annoying, but luckily we do have Shrine of Punishment. And these Tapu Bulu decks, I'd say, typically only play around three of these Aether Paradise Stadiums, whereas we play four Shrine. And they were the first to put their Stadium into play as well, which means we are definitely going to come out ahead in the Stadium War. But here we see another Steven's Resolve. Okay, so kind of a slower start for our opponent. Just kind of taking time to build up their field. And it's actually a little bit scary. So let's see here. What do we do? That's the real question. Um... So we can get down a Quagsire. I want to spread our energy around. I don't want them to Guzma up this Quagsire and take a knockout on it. So here I'm just trying to think, where do I want to put this energy? Uh, because I have to assume that they are going to Guzma next turn. So we'll Ultra Ball, getting rid of the water energy for now, and we can get rid of the Cynthia. I kind of want to keep the counter energy, since I have a feeling we are going to go down on prizes before our opponent. Uh, however, we do have Switch potentially in deck, so... Uh, we could even do that so let's let's see what we can make happen we're gonna go for the smooth over 
But we do have Shrine of Punishment, so I do like that. So yeah, so let's, um, we could go for the Switch, but I, what I kind of want to do here is maybe just take our time and just try to spread with Shrine while we have this Pseudo Widow in the active. So here I'm going to get down the Counter Energy. Uh, we can use that with Washout as well if we need to. So here we'll get that down. Uh, like I said, just kind of trying to spread our resources around a little bit in case our opponent does have a Guzma. I don't want to commit too much to any one Pokemon. And here we're just going to go for the Cynthia. And okay, so we have another Nest Ball. We can potentially get out another Wooper, or we could even do Volcanium Prism Star. I do think that is an option. Uh, Volcanium Prism Star actually seems like a pretty good attacker in this matchup too, uh, just because their Nature's Judgment will have to discard all of their energy to take a knockout on it. And we do have another Aqua Patch as well, so we could do that. So we'll do that, and we'll put that on the Volcanium Prism Star. It seems okay to me. And we can just pass here. So we're going to do get that Shrine of Punishment down and start to spread some damage. Even though we're not attacking, we are still putting on some degree of pressure, kind of forcing our opponent to spring into action here and start uh, you know, making something happen with their deck. So even if they have Guzma, like they have so many different targets that they're going to want to take out here that I think we're going to be in an okay spot. But here they are going to go for the Quagsire, kind of realizing it is going to be a bit of a threat to them. Alright, so they are going to do 240. Just trying to think, who do we actually promote? I think we... I think we can actually take a knockout because... Let's see... Um, could attack with a Ranguru even. That actually might require the fewer, the fewest amount of resources. I usually don't want to put my Ranguru in harm's way, but... I actually think this... Um, we might be okay attacking with it here. So we can smooth over, and what we can do is we can grab ourselves a Choice Band here. And Psychic does 60 plus 20 for every energy on our opponent's active, so we're going to be hitting for 120, 150 with Choice Band, and then uh, in between turns the uh, Shrine of Punishment damage and this Kukui will actually take a knockout on it. So here we'll go for the... The actually, you know, probably did not need to Kukui in hindsight. I forgot about the 20 damage we already had. Um, yeah, I think we probably should just save the Kukui for next turn. Here, we'll keep the Aqua Patch, I suppose. That seems okay to me. And here, we can Ultra Ball. Get rid of the Shrine and the Water Energy. And here, we can grab ourselves a Quagsire. Or we could even grab another Wooper as well. I think either one is fine. Okay, so yeah, uh, I think we messed up a little bit playing the Kukui instead of the Acrobat because right now we're going to be hitting for 150 and then the Shrine damage in between turns would have done the job for us. But um, nevertheless, we are going to be able to take a knockout here uh, and actually take the lead against this uh, Tapu Bulu deck. So here we're going to go for a Nest Ball and we are just going to Psychic for a knockout. So like I said, I do kind of wish I would have gotten to hang on to that Professor Kukui, but uh, we are at least taking the lead here against this uh, this Tapu Lele deck. And even if our opponent is able to knock us out with this Tapu Lele, uh, we can actually take a return KO, I'm pretty sure, with our Quagsire. So they're going to go down to 130 damage in between, or after their turn that they're going to be on. So a, a Hydro Pump from us. Ooh, they actually have Acerola, so never mind. That is going to change things a little bit for us. All right, so let's see. What do we do? What do we do? Um, so do we just go with Volcanion? Or we could even... It seems weird. We could even attack with Wooper. As strange as that is. Because right now we're basically only going to be doing 130 once you factor in Shrine. But you know what? We might be able to still make this happen. Let's see what we can get here. Uh, we do top deck Lilies. So that's pretty good. So here we're going to go for an Aqua Patch. So we honestly kind of lucked out here getting the... Or actually what we could do is we could even Guzma up this uh, Vicavolt. That is an option as well. So Hmm. Yeah, because I don't think we can take a knockout this turn. If we get... 
Well, if we get a choice band, that's going to be 150. So 160 after the shrine. So yeah, we're going to be 10 short of making that happen. But um, let's see. Yeah, this seems kind of bad. Maybe maybe we misplayed here. Um, but we can still. Yeah, I guess we can. We can move this energy up to the Quagsire and take a knockout this way. And actually, we still have counter energy in deck. So I guess at some point, and we still have two Aqua Patches, I believe. So uh, we 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 might have a way to actually make the make this work. The only thing is, if we lose four energy, we're gonna be in a bad spot. But think we're okay right now also though just because our opponent is going to need double rare candy vicable in order to take a knockout here so we'll have to see if they can make that happen um yeah it's kind of a high risk high reward play we just went for here we have to basically assume uh if we get knocked out we might be in a bad spot to lose this just because we're gonna lose so much energy that we have so we had a couple different place to potentially go for that turn we could have uh just kind of like softened up our opponent with whooper we could have tried to guzma this uh vicable to uh stall them but also i kind of like just taking a knockout at the same time so it was a little greedy but oh yeah and this is pretty bad as well uh tap coco can uh take a knockout on us that uh, has that sky high calls attack so for two lightning and the car is 130 which is going to deal with everything we have, especially Volcanium and Prism Star it is weak to Lightning as well. So even the high HP that we normally like about Volcanium and Prism Star isn't going to matter too much here. So what do we do? What do we do? I think this might even be a situation where... Hmm, I'm trying to think. We could potentially make it happen. We, It is possible for us to take a knockout. We, we'll need a lot, but I think it is possible here. Let's see. So let's see, we have three Quagsires in the discard. Have our Ranger in discard, so we're gonna need to shuffle some cards back in. So we're gonna want definitely a Ranger, that's a given, and maybe just a Wooper, that seems good. Because we have a Quagsire in hand, so we're basically getting a 1 1 Quagsire back and an Oringer. So here we can Ultra Ball, we can get rid of. Or we could even try to Guzma and let let some Shrine, shrine damage accumulate this turn as well. I do think that is actually an option here. So let's see what our opponents use. They've used an Acerola, they've only used one Guzma. So more than likely, we're going to be in some trouble. But um, nevertheless, we're going to try to sacrifice this pseudo widow this turn. Here we can Ultra Ball. What do we do though? We get rid of a Shrine and a Cynthia. We can grab our trusty Oranguru. Just taking a peek what we have left in the deck. It's not looking too good, guys. I think Counter Energy might even be kind of our savior for this game if we're not able to get some energy in play manually. Because we're actually out of Aqua Patches. I thought we had a couple left. Um, yeah, so at this point, all we need is basic waters. If we can successfully get basic waters in play, we just win. But if our opponent does start to knock us out, that does open the possibility up for counter energy. So, yeah, we're just going to get that down and we're just going to pass. And just hope our opponent does not have a Guzma. Now, the one thing good about this is, even though we're not really doing much damage right now, Shrine is still actually setting up some KOs for us. Uh, so they are going to go for a Lele. So no doubt we're going to see a Guzma this turn. If I just had a guess, I think that's a very safe assumption to see here. So our opponent is going to go for a Guzma. Let's see what they get. They have a variety of things they could target down here. Uh, they could try to actually take away our draw with the Ranguru. That is a potential option for them since I only have a two-card hand. They don't know I have Cynthia. Okay, but they are going to target down the Quagsire. I think that's good. Definitely a smart choice by them taking away our, uh, you know, energy manipulator. 
Here we just sacrifice Sudowoodo, and actually, I think, I still feel kind of okay about this. If we can get down a Wooper and an Energy this turn, I think we're going to be in a good spot. So, do we just Cynthia? I think we do. We only have 12 cards left in deck. I mean, we could guarantee something with this Mag Cargo. Like, just guarantee the Wooper or whatever it is right now, but I think I just want to Cynthia here. Nice, we actually get down two Wooper, that's really big. And we need to hit an energy off of this Acrobike. So we're gonna smooth over. And we'll put this Water Energy. And here we can Acrobike getting the Water Energy. And even if our opponent does uh, target down this Wooper or whatever it might be, uh, we're going to be able to actually throw down Counter Energy since they're gonna be going down to one prize. And I, I feel kind of okay about our spot. But here, ooh, that's actually kind of big. They have the uh, conservation area, but actually we can still make this happen because uh, conservation area does not actually apply for Tapu Lele GX. It's only for basic grass and lightning Pokemon. So actually, I think, <laughs> I think we, we, we might have game here. So we're going to see a retreat. Okay, so they are trying to avoid uh, getting a, a GX knockout. They must not have had Guzma. So they're going to try to attack with Vickable to close out the game here. So we're going to see an Electro Can knocking out the Pseudo Widow. And I think, guys, I think we have game because we can attach Counter Energy to Quagsire, do 120, and then the Tapu Lele already has 40 on it. So that should be enough. Oh no, we would be 10 short. I know we have another water energy in play, so yeah, we're actually good either way. Yeah, so we should be good. We can, and also we have Meg Carga as well, so we can actually grab Choice Band or whatever it might be. So here, yeah, we'll evolve into the Quagsire. We smooth over. We can even grab a Choice Band or Shrine of Punishment. Okay, so we're out of Choice Band, so we're gonna grab a Shrine of Punishment. Uh, either way, it doesn't matter, but we're gonna get it in play just because so we'll attach the counter energy instruct. Get that shrine of punishment. Get that eighth paradise out of here. We're gonna we want to do some more damage if possible. So we're gonna goose them up, tap a lele here. And now we can use a washout, moving all of this energy to our Quagsire and taking a knockout and actually winning against this Tapu Bulu deck. I thought this was actually going to be pretty bad for us, but between the Kukui's and all the big one-hit knockouts we were able to make happen, thanks to our damage modifiers, we ended up taking this game. So Quagsire is going to emerge victorious. Who would have thought? But yeah, guys, hope you enjoyed this look at this crazy Quagsire deck. Definitely a deck I did not expect to do as well as it has been doing for me online. Definitely a fun uh, shrine deck if you like these shrine decks but are sick of Buzzwell Garbodor or Buzzwell Weavile. Definitely feel free to try this one out. It's a good bit of fun. But as usual, guys, feel free to like and subscribe. And if you can support this channel by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg or by picking up something from our online store at rarecandytcg.com, it would mean a lot. But with that, I appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time.